Let us take a moment to gather. Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. From the deceitful and cunning rescue me, for you, O God, are my strength. Our opening song will be number 129, well, 129 if you have your hymnal home, sorry, my bad. From the depths we cry to thee, verses 1 and 2. From the depths we cry to thee, God of sovereign majesty, hear our prayers and hymns of praise, bless our Lent of forty days. Gracious God, our hearts renew, strengthen us thy will to do, Wash us, make us pure within, cleanse us from the stain of sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's try that again, I usually chant. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Again, welcome uh, now to Our Lady of the Holy Spirit here in Mount Zion. My name is Father Ayersman. I am pastor here. It is a great joy to celebrate this Eucharist with you. Throughout our Lenten season, we will continue Penitential Act B. And uh, we will continue the Curie and, and uh, know of my prayers for you as we gather for this Eucharist today. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, 
I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put a spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be, that you may be revered. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trust in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also, through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection of life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus, Lazarus from Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God 
that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are, you not, or are, are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of, of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this, and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought he was mean, he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died. And I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to him, so she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the re resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him. For Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the, of, of the blind man have done something so that this man would, have not, would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave. A stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I, tell you that if, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him 
and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have much discussion about the resurrection today, about rising. Ezekiel tells us that the Lord will raise his people, will open the graves and have them rise from them and bring them back to the land. Brothers and sisters, we experience that land, that land of Israel, that new Zion, that land that was promised to us, heaven. We experience that not just Yes, when we are in heaven with God, but we experience that now. In the here and now, in the Mass, every time that we come to Mass, we experience heaven. And so often I hear people say things like, well, I get nothing out of Mass or it's so boring. If we knew what was taking place here, we would want to be nowhere else. Because here is where we experience that glimpse of heaven. The reality of where we all long to be with God. Surrounded by all the hosts of angels, the, the, the saints all gathered here with us around the altar of God. And so when we come to Mass, we remind ourselves that this is where the flesh is conquered. This is where the sacraments then bring about that grace which brings about a transformation from being people of the flesh to being people of the Spirit. In this time at home... See this as a time to conquer the struggles, the sins of the flesh. Those sins that we struggle with so much. Stop being, a peop stop being people of this world and being people focused on the world to come. Stop thinking about the body and think about the soul. Use this time to discipline ourselves. And in fact, we even hear this from mental health experts is, People are not used to being home and being still and being, being uh, you know, what, what we call inactive. Brothers and sisters, be active in this time. But you might ask, how can we do this in our homes when we're locked away? You can walk around your house. You can walk around in the house and even outside of the house. You can be outside just as long as you're distanced from people. But see this at a time as a discipline, a time to discipline yourselves, yes? You know, being physically disciplined and maybe doing some ex sort of exercise in your home. Being physically disciplined and making sure you take care of your body, eating well. Making sure that you get enough rest. Making sure that you rest as you should. Going to bed at a reasonable hour and getting up at a reasonable time. Making sure not to nap too much during the day to cause these depression feelings that can come about through a lack of or a, a getting off of the sleep schedule. Brothers and sisters, see this time as a time to discipline yourself spiritually, though, as well. Spiritually read. Spiritually read the scriptures. Pray. Pray the rosary. Pray the chaplet of divine mercy. Sit in silence with God. Take the time to watch Mass or some other form of, of growth in the spiritual life. Watch that formed website. Find things on Word on Fire. Use your phones and your internet for something of not just Netflix binging, but of also watching things that grow, help us grow spiritually. Be people not of the flesh, but of the spirit. Be, be the people Christ has claimed, because he then resides in you. And if he resides in you, he can work wonders in and through you. Today we see one of those wonders Today we see this familiar story of Lazarus being healed, of being raised from the dead, this prefigurement and pointing to the resurrection. But notice very clearly it is not like the resurrection, for Jesus raises himself from the dead, where today Jesus is the one that raises Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus, Martha, and Mary are from Bethany. No, not Bethany, Illinois, where we were this morning, or which is right next door to us here in Mount Zion, but from Bethany just outside of Jerusalem. Going to Lazarus 
was something of a danger. Because in Jerusalem, they tried to kill Jesus. They longed to imprison him and kill him. And eventually they will. Yes, we know this. But this shows that God is in full control. Jesus is not out of control in any of these experiences. So he's told, Master, the one you love is ill. And he says, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God. That the Son of God may be glorified through it. And brothers and sisters, I think that he's speaking also of this illness of the coronavirus. This illness is not to end in death. Yes, people will die, but when we have Christ, it is not an eternal death. Death is inevitable for all of us. We do not fear death when we have Christ and his sacraments. But all of this, all of this suffering, all of this struggle is for God's glory. Now, many have asked questions, and you hear all these theories about why God is punishing the world. But brothers and sisters, how do we know this is of God? When really it's probably from us. So, in this time, even in the most horrific of things that we can do, even in the things of our sin and death that we bring into the world by our sins, brothers and sisters, God will be glorified because he will then work his wonders. Pay attention to those wonders. We can see those wonders being worked around us always. As people are coming back to the Lord more and more. As people see that they can do nothing without him. As people see the gods of our world being conquered. Those things of fame and fortune. Of success. For those people who put sports or sports figures or or actors or actresses as gods in their life. Put their work or their money ahead of their family and their faith. Brothers and sisters, this is where we return to God. And we see that glory shining in him. We see that glory shining in how people care for one another and reach out to one another. Yes, you hear those negative stories of people fighting and hoarding and doing horrible things. But here is where we see the Lord working. And how he cares for those who are sick through us praying for them. How he cares for those who are sick through the nurses and doctors who are doing the work to keep them alive physically, bodily. Brothers and sisters, we see how we reach out to those who are in the healthcare field to provide those things that they need, those masks and those gowns that people are making. We see people ordering food and praying for them. Continue this. We can see in, in the suffering of those who are sick that when it is united to the cross, it is something that is life-giving, that brings God glory. So in all of this, we see that this illness is not to end in death, but in life eternal. And give God glory when we turn to him. So today we see then this story of Lazarus play out all the more. I love this line. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. And then it says, so when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Wait, if he loved them so much, why did he not rush to them? Because he wanted to show the glory of God. And he wanted to show who he truly is. And so, it also shows that he is in full control. He has this discussion with his disciples about Lazarus being asleep, and whether he's just asleep, and whether or not he's dead, or what is going on. And then very clearly he says, Lazarus has died. And brothers and sisters, we too die in our sins. Because of our sins, we die in ourselves. We see the sickness and struggle of this world because of our sins. So then, Thomas says, let us also go to die with him. Brothers and sisters, we will, if we do not turn to Christ, and turn away from our sins. So then Jesus comes to this town. 
And he encounters Martha and Mary, who both have differing reactions to this experience. Martha runs to Jesus, asking him to help. Mary is a little bit mad, you can tell, and devastated and sad and home. Both are differing reactions to grief. But both have the same reaction when they speak to Jesus. If you were here, he would not have died. And then they have this discussion about your brother will rise. We hear resurrection over and over and over throughout this reading. But then, in this moment, we see that Jesus, Jesus is both fully God, but he is fully man. He is sad at the death of his friend, as we are sad at the loss of our loved ones. So he wept. It is okay to weep and grieve. But like Martha and Mary, may we run to Jesus for intercession. So many people say, why would we turn to the saints for intercession? But why do we turn to one another to intercede, to pray for each other? Because it is effective. Because God is always listening. And the more we ask, the more we all turn together to him, Martha, Mary, ourselves, the saints, the angels, as we all turn to God and ask and plead, he hears. And in fact, Jesus says this very clearly. He comes to the tomb and he tells them to take away the stone. And they say there'll be a stench. They're still worried about the body. They're still worried about the things of this world. They still struggle to believe that he can raise from the dead. And so he says, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. And brothers and sisters, he says this for you and for me because of the crowd here. I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when we think that God is not listening or does not hear, let us hearken to those words and hear Jesus say, I know you always hear me as he always hears you. And then he does not leave you in the death of your sins. He calls to you. He comes to this tomb and he calls out, Lazarus, come out. He calls to Lazarus by name as he calls to you by name so that he may raise you from the dead, that he might raise you from your sins. And this is not only a moment of intercession, but a moment of seeing the gift of confession. It says the dead man came out. Tied hand and foot with burial cloths and his face wrapped in a cloth. In, in a cloth. Brothers and sisters, he is still dead because he's still bound by those sins. His body has been raised, but Jesus has not died on the cross. Jesus has not been resurrected. So therefore, this is not the same thing as the resurrection of the body. And the, con the conquering of sin has not yet taken place. So Lazarus is still dead in his sins. And so many people ask this question, why do I need to go to a priest for confession? And I think it's spelled out very clearly here. Jesus says to him, rise, come out. Come out of those sins, come out of ourselves, and follow him. But yet, he's still tied, and he tells them to go and untie him. Brothers and sisters, we need to untie our, our, the burdens we place on ourselves and on one another by forgiving, forgiving ourselves, forgiving one another, and being forgiven. Because in confession, we come and we not only present our sins to Christ and in the person of Christ, Je uh, in, the, in the priest is in the person of Christ Jesus, the, the high priest, who is the one forgiving. But also, the, the priest is in the person of all of humanity, who we also need to be untied from. And so we come to this great gift of being healed, of being raised, of being untied, so that we might, may not be dead men coming out of our graves, but because of the cross, because of that conquering of, of Jesus of death, we do not come out dead men, but we come out alive in Christ. So let us be untied in that gift of confession. 
Let us be risen with him. We hear over and over, risen, risen, rose. Because this all points to what Jesus longs to do in you. Now many of the Jews had come, who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. They came to believe because of Mary bringing them to Jesus. May you do the same in telling them of what, you have, of what he has done in you, of your faith in who he is, and how he has raised you from the dead of your sins. Allow him to take this time to conquer them in you. Hear him call your name, to come out, to rise. So for the day that we see him face to face, we hear him call us by name again. And for that day, not only to have the glimpse of the resurrection, to have the fullness of what Christ longs for you and me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now turn our hearts and our lives to the Lord to hear and answer our prayers. That the one holy Catholic and apostolic church continue to proclaim the value of life, especially with those who are ill with the coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the nations of the world know the love and peace of Jesus, who wept for Lazarus as he weeps for the suffering in this world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those preparing for the Easter sacraments learn to die to self, like Jesus, in order to rise like Lazarus in this great suffering that they endure of waiting for those Easter sacraments as they are not able to be brought in on the Easter vigil for the moment that they are able to finally be brought those gifts of the sacraments and brought to Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be healed, the dying be comforted, and their, their caregivers be renewed in spirit, especially for those caregivers who are caring for the sick in this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who gather around this table reach out with love to those who grieve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I ask you to pray for Beth Murphy, a parishioner of Saints Peter and Paul in Collinsville, my first assignment, a good friend of mine who uh, had a heart attack and is in, in critical condition, that she might feel that healing touch of Christ, especially as she's alone in this moment, that she knows that she's not alone because Christ is with her. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all parishioners for whom this Mass is offered of both of our parishes, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we pray our parish prayer together. Almighty God, my parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It will be friendly if I am. It will be holy if I am. Its views will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It will be prayerful if I pray. It will make generous gifts to many causes if I am a generous giver. It will bring other people into its worship if I invite and bring them. It will be a parish family of loyalty and love, of fearlessness and faith, 
and of compassion, charity, and mercy, if I, who make it what it is, am filled with these same qualities. Therefore, with the help of God, I will dedicate myself to the task of being all the things I want my parish to be. Bless my journey, Lord God, that I might follow Jesus and build the church for your glory. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend. And as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he led us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Seus Sabaoth, plenis uncernia terra, gloria tua, hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui venit Domine, Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross, but before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine 
and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas John our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven. With the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with, bless, with, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Let peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. On you stay. Qui tolis peccata mundi. Miserere nobis, agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis, agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter through my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. says the Lord. The body of Christ.
Our spiritual communion prayer, if you'd repeat after me. My Jesus. My Jesus. I believe that you. I believe that you. Are present in. Are present in. The most holy sacrament. The most holy sacrament. I love you. I love you. Above all things. Above all things. And I desire. And I desire. To receive you. To receive you. Into my soul. Into my soul. Since I cannot. Since I cannot. At this moment. At this moment. Receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come at least. Come at least. Spiritually into my heart. Spiritually into my heart. I embrace you. I embrace you. As if you were already there. As if you were already there. And unite myself. And unite myself. Holy to you. Holy to you. Never permit me. Never permit me. To be separated from you. To be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the, the Archangel, Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our, our protection, protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May and God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, Satan and all the evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the root of souls. Amen. <clears throat> we will say uh, a glory be for the end of the pandemic. Glory be to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, and, and to the, to the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Our closing song will be number 129, verse 3. From the depths we cry to thee. Lord, accept our Lenten fast and forgive our sinful past that we may partake with thee in the Easter mystery. Proceed. singles couple of announcements. <clears throat> Wouldn't be mass without the announcements, right? Uh, don't forget about online giving, and uh, for those who would like to continue to give physically, uh, there's a metal box on the back of the parish office that you can drop your envelope in, uh, and we will collect those every day. And so uh, on the back of the parish office, the parish office is around the back of the church, so just follow the signs that point to the parish office and find that big metal, uh, or little metal box actually, uh, right by the parish office door. Um, let's also say a prayer for our nurses and our doctors and our healthcare personnel, our first responders, our, our uh, paramedics. I, 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 if, for many of you know that I worked in a hospital for a while uh, and uh, I hear from a lot of my nursing friends and, and uh, those who are still working in that, in that area that it's, uh, it's it's becoming a pretty big strain on them mentally of the struggle and the difficulty, but especially uh, many of them are quarantining them, uh, themselves away from their families uh, because of fear of bringing it home from the hospital to their families. So 
it, it's it, where they would normally have their families and, and, and such to be able to help cope with the difficulties of the work that they do. Uh, it's even harder right now. So let's say a prayer for them. Hail Mary, full, full of, of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is, is with thee. thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for, for us sinners, sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. And know we love you for the work that you're doing and the work you always do. Um, continue to pray for the end of the coronavirus. Don't forget, confessions are available before and after each one of the Masses. Um, or actually, sorry, just after each one of the Masses. Before is a little too complicated to try to get everything set up and ready and, and everything. So just after each one of the Masses every day uh, is when confessions are available. And also um, uh, at 4.15 to 5.15 on Wednesdays, uh, you can still come or by appointment uh, by emailing uh, myself at pastor at mtzolhs.org. Um, and so uh, please take the opportunity for that gift of confession. And the church is open uh, throughout the day. The only time it's locked is when I'm saying Mass, uh, but it, it is open otherwise, and, and you are able to come in and pray. Uh, just make sure that you use the, the pews that are not taped off, uh, so that way we only know, uh, we only have a few to clean, uh, and, and that way we know which ones to clean, um, and also to keep ourselves socially distanced while we're in here. And then lastly, um, this, la this next week is Holy Week, uh, so beginning of, so this week, uh, this, uh, Daily Mass will be Monday through Saturday at 9 a.m., but then after that, uh, starting Palm Sunday, we might have some changes with the Mass schedule because of, uh, of Holy Week, and so some of those Masses need to be in the evening, and so I'll be publishing when those times are and everything so that you can follow along with at home, but just wanted to make you aware of that now uh, so that you look ahead to what's coming. And uh, thank you all, and God bless you, and know of my prayers for you. Please continue to pray for me.